I don't think we are mature enough to actually <laughs> make the right decisions. Mm. I don't. I, I'm sorry. I have really sadly lost a lot of faith in humanity. So you say that, but I know that each single one of us has a story. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> my name is Mike. This is my YouTube page, Mox News. Thanks very much for tuning in. <clears throat> okay, so I just want to say uh, about what Arwa, Arwa, Arwa Damon, Ar the journalist who said that she's lost faith in humanity. I kind of understand. Um, it's one of those things where I, what I was talking about earlier about why I had to take a break this year, this past year, from being overloaded with this, uh, with this, with this journalism stuff because what happens is you know this this Arwa Damon who's like CNN's most hardcore journalist there is if there is shit going on in the world she is there covering it the rest of these people in that room can't hold a fucking candle a light a, a match to her she she they're a bunch of dandies compared to her Okay, she's the real thing, and she's saying that she lost faith in humanity. And it's sad because, you know, I mean, it, she's kind of have to have a break soon, I'm sure, because you can't, can't go on when you lose faith like that. You know, it's just, I'm here to tell you, I have not lost faith in you guys. That's why I come out here and say one of these days this war is going to end, and it's going to be you and I who do it. Because, because who she's lost faith in is the governments of the world. Who she's lost faith in is the um, the people like at the Pentagon that are supposed to be making it better, and they just make it worse and worse and worse. That's who she's lost faith in. These people that she's supposed to be, you know, reporting the good propaganda for, she can't do it anymore. She knows Turkey is smuggling sarin gas to the ISIS. She knows the Pentagon is, is giving ISIS pallets of $100 bills, buying oil from them. Get, they're the ones supplying the bullets. The video I made yesterday or the day before saying we have to bomb the people that are supplying the bullets to ISIS. That's why we can't do that. Because it's the Pentagon that's bombing, that's supplying the bullets to ISIS. But I digress. Um, it's easy to understand where she's coming from, and and I think it's partially why a lot of people are turning off to news completely because the news again is something that you've lost faith in. The news is these people that are supposed to be there for you, and 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 when something's going on that you need to know what's going on, or someone needs to be held accountable for what's going on. The news are primary is, is a primary source of who it is that's supposed to hold people accountable. And and they're just a bunch of ball suckers, you know, whoever it is, the cops, the the uh, the politicians, the president, the the Pentagon, they're just there they just uh, regurgitate whatever it is that they're told by the Pentagon. They don't investigate to see if it's true or not. Whatever, whatever comes out of the White House, you know, whatever Hillary Clinton says is golden. <sighs> you know, um, so it's easy to understand why someone in journalism or someone that's paying attention to journalism a lot, like, like a lot of you hardcore people that watch the Mox News, um, could lose faith. I myself was having a really hard time when this last Gaza war thing hit, you know, I mean, after 10 years on YouTube and years more before YouTube came around doing journalism and seeing my seventh, eighth Gaza war, you know, and, and believing that part of what it is that I'm doing is so that one of these days this war is going to end. And knowing that that doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon. And knowing that American taxpayer dollars fund the vast majority of it. Very frustrating. Very easy to understand where Arwa is Arwa Damon, the journalist 
there it said that she's lost faith in humanity. Very easy to understand where she's coming from. But I don't think it's actual humanity that she's lost faith in. It's the governments that we expect to do the right thing. It's the militaries that we expect to do the right thing. They're supposed to be trying to make it a better world for all of us. That's who we've lost faith in. The politicians that are supposed to be standing up for the Constitution, for your rights, and instead they just bend over and, and, and say, yeah, we got to spy on everybody. Yeah, we don't need a warrant. No, that's, that's a bunch of bullshit. Whoever came up with that idea was a fucking moron. <sighs> okay, so thanks very much. Uh, I'm not going to jabber on anymore. I'm going to play that CNN story for you now. And um, uh, we're doing a fundraiser, a continuous fundraiser. I need your help if anybody is out there and understands that I haven't lost faith and I'm still trying. And <laughs> I got... In the last five days, one seven dollar donation, and then in the last few minutes, my friends from Australia kicked down a little something, something extra twenty five from me. Yay! Um, I need you guys' help. I really, if you can sign up for five bucks a month, it's huge for me. That's what's going to, you know, a little tip once a month to say, here, let me buy lunch for you today, Mike. That's what's going to make a huge difference. That's what's going to make the difference is when you guys are like, hey, this guy's the real thing. He's been in the shit for 10 years on the YouTube. He's been there, been through it. Nobody's fought harder on the YouTube. And I didn't make you sit through one commercial that I put on there. I'm not, you know, it's so weird. I see people who download my videos and then re-upload them and then they put commercials on the front of them. They're making money off of it. That's not fair use. Okay, so you know. Uh, thank you for your continued support. I will continue um, my best to do something worthwhile here on the YouTube for as long as I have your support. Stay cool. When you say this war is going to end, don't lose faith. The president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, says that NATO has become a threat to his country. Mr. Putin signed an executive order on Thursday formalizing Russia's stance toward that alliance. CNN senior international correspondent Matthew Chance has the very latest. Well, this isn't necessarily a changing strategy, but it's, it's making formal what Russian officials have really been spelling out for years, which is that NATO and the expansion of the military alliance is seen very much here as a threat to Russia's national security. Now, Russia and the West have been at odds over NATO expansion uh, for several years. Uh, it was the prospect of Ukraine being absorbed into the alliance that was one of the reasons that Russia annexed Crimea back in 2014, where it's got a, uh, an important naval base on the Black Sea. Uh, the new national security paper, which is updated every six years in Russia by law, says that Russia's independent and domestic foreign policy have triggered what it called a counteraction on the part of the United States and its allies. Well, the paper is only the latest in a series of Russian statements that put Moscow and NATO at loggerheads. Back in 2014, Russia updated its formal military doctrine, its official preparations to defend Russia with its weapons, to take into account NATO's growing presence in Eastern Europe. At the time, Russian defence officials said that uh, NATO's enlargement meant the alliance was getting closer to Russia's borders uh, and presented an external threat to the country. It, it's still the case, apparently, that, that that is what's believed is still true uh, here in Russia. Matthew Chance, CNN, Moscow. And when it comes to Russia's influence and actions, all were major talking points in 2015, especially when it comes to Syria. And that is likely to continue. Several of our CNN senior international correspondents sat down to take a look at what they think 2016 will bring. We're seeing the collapse of, of Arab states, basically, yeah. one after another. And, and God knows I think, which yeah. country may be next. I hope I'm wrong, but I think it's going to get worse. And I really, really, really don't want to be right about this. 
gente, el bici. In terms of the next phase in ISIS's evolution, are you looking towards Libya? Do you think that that's where the, the push is going to be for them? I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think we're going to see a lot of changes in Syria and Iraq, possibly. Possibly ones that have unintended consequences. I think we're going to see many problems in Afghanistan, too. And ISIS are a very attractive brand to a lot of very poor and angry young men there. Uh, and I think, yes, Libya will be a problem. But I think also the West have slightly got their heads around Libya. I think it's going to get a lot worse in the sense of kind of what you're talking about. You know, it is going to change, but it's still going to be there. And that fear that they are able to create and generate is going to be there. And let's not forget in all of this, I mean, the Assad regime also and what yeah. they're doing to the population and how those actions and the fact that people feel so abandoned by the West yeah. that failed to come in and mm. save them when people it comes to dying this. at the hands of Assad, that's what drove so many of them into them. I mean, how many activists did we all know who yeah. right now are either dead, fled, or they've become disappeared. radical? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or disappeared. And Let's not forget that you have just a mind-boggling number of foreign militaries yeah. all flying and backing different yeah. proxies yeah. with completely contradictory uh, strategic goals. It's incoherent yeah. international matter. But I do think there is a consensus forming around the need to actually move, you know. But I'd also think everyone has a different idea about how to bring down Ooh. ISIS. The Russians think that bombing the, the Russians Turkmen and the Iranians are supporting the, the, the Assad regime. The but ISIS is a nice lightning rod for what is a huge conflagration in the whole region. But there is a need for the region to take ownership of the problem yes. and fix it themselves. Even if ISIS is somehow defeated, that doesn't fix the problem of the Saudis and the Iranians being octogenarians running a youthful population with diminishing funds. But that's funds. what it comes so. down to, right? Ultimately, Saudi Arabia and Iran need to like be locked in a room together. At the same time, while we're all kind of hopeful that there will be some consensus moving towards solving the problem in Iraq, you have an ISIS presence growing in Yemen because we're, yeah. we're, we're and, all and ignoring no the reality of the Saudi Arabian bomb. No one's talking about Yemen. But I really believe it's possible that we're seeing a seismic tectonic shift within the Middle East and that over the next few decades, you're going to see a lot of these borders oh, rewritten. Absolutely. And they were yeah, artificially no, they designated borders anyway. The way governments were set up and right. the way boundaries were drawn was unsustainable. They, they were never going to last. But it didn't scary. have to be this violent. This uh, mythology that we can protect ourselves, that we can close borders, that we can close doors, with the Ebola crisis last year, with the refugee, with the Syria crisis washing up on, on Europe's shores, I mean, I think Europe essentially knows that it is existential to get its house in order this year. I don't think we are mature enough to actually <laughs> make the right decisions. Mm. I don't. I, I'm sorry. I have really sadly lost a lot of faith in humanity. So you say that, but I know that each single one of us has a story from the field where we have been completely overwhelmed by the kindness and the extraordinary generosity of people in the worst possible situations. Yes, and I think that's what I hold on to. They cover the stories in the field for us, but also see so many things and can bring us uh, some pretty remarkable context, our CNN correspondents. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.